animals deserve our love, especially those in the streets in need of a home and those in death row in need of saving. Here in the Philippines, animal homelessness has reached a crisis point. This morning, we'll witness stories of rescue animals who found themselves with love and care again. We are joined by the founder of Passion Project Foundation, Malu Perez, along with Tux and Garrett. See, Tux really loves me. <laughs> Garrett's hiding. Garrett's hiding. Garrett's hiding. Tux doesn't want to let Garrett. go of my it's head every time shy. I try to let go. Uh, no, he, he wants the attention again. <laughs> <laughs> Malu, welcome to the show. Thank you. You know what? Honestly, I've always wanted to meet you in person for the longest time because I follow you on social, on your socials, and I've seen all the work that Passion Project has done rescuing these dogs, giving them homes, giving them hope. Right. So tell us, uh, Malu, how did Passion Project start? Yeah, so I started um, Potion Project almost six years ago, mm -hmm. October of 2018 in Bacolod. That's where I'm from. Um, and it all started because of a single Facebook post. Mm -hmm. So I saw a post about 50 dogs on death row. They were to be killed by gunshot at oh, the pound. What? Unfortunately, that is legal in the country. We're a third world country where animal welfare is the least priority. Gunshot? gunshot. Are you serious? Yeah. I am se I'm really shocked. Yeah. So growing up, I've always been a dog lover, but okay. I was never aware about these realities mm -hmm. because animal welfare is really not talked about. Um, when I saw the post, I went to the pound. Mm -hmm. um, but before that, you know, the shelter where the where, where the, the the farm where the first shelter was built, it was supposed to be an Airbnb business. Okay. And then when I saw the post, I went to the pound. It was my first ever. Um, experience, experience doing that. Experience yeah. at the pound because I, I didn't even know there were pounds in the Philippines okay. before. Okay. And it was very traumatic. I have to say I have been scarred for life oh. since that day. Because imagine going inside the pound, you see so many dogs with almost zero energy to move. They couldn't stand. They were just begging for help. I was standing next to and the I'm hole. I'm sure they're just really crammed in one cramped. small space. Super cramped, right? super cramped in the oh. cells. And I was standing next to the hole where they were supposed to be buried. So can you imagine just about how traumatic that yeah, one is? Yeah. I, didn't ha I didn't have any plans to put up a shelter, honestly. I just wanted to save those dogs. But, you know, the rest was history. When I saved those dogs, I started to receive so many messages from so many people all over the country yes. telling me, you know, it's the same thing here. I was getting videos, photos, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, you know, the first week since I started it, I just couldn't sleep. Every time I close my eyes, I hear the cries of the dogs. Mm. I'd see the look in their faces. It was very traumatic. So that became a very life-changing experience. <laughs> so you, you started as a... Oh, Growling, pa, what did you do? Tux, come here. Tux may have run away from me at the moment. Uh, so, so you started I with, with uh, saving those 50 dogs. Yes, And yes. now Potion Tuxi. Project is already a, a big organization. Wow. Yeah, can you tell us how that happened? Yeah, so, um, you know, almost six years from now. Tuxi, come here. You want to come here? You want to come uh -oh. here? Those hey, are Tuxi. friends. These are all friends. So <laughs> this is actually friends. a really interesting story because we were talking about Tux a while ago. Yeah. So this is Tux. He has issues with guys, guys, guys in general, yeah. like me. It's and okay. Okay. I think he's protecting all of you from me. Uh, but can you tell us a bit about Tux's story? You also brought Garen, yes. who is yes. a yes. 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 But can you tell us a bit about their stories? Because it's really interesting yeah. that uh, each each uh, animal or each they have dog their own has their own story. Yeah. Yes. So I was saying earlier, um, you know, almost six years later since I started the project, mm. we have already rescued over 2,000 dogs and oh, cats. Wow. Most of them were from the pound, just like Taxi. So Taxi, I got him from the Bulacan pound. He was on death row. Um, and then Garen is a hit and run victim. So when we got Garen, both his eyes were just popped out. And oh, then he man. had owners, but they couldn't afford to send him to the vet. So Tux right here, he's always had issues with guys. I think because he was traumatized when he was impounded. Yeah. You know, the manner of how people would impound strays in the Philippines is just awful. Mm. Yeah. Some of them would even die from being strangled. Yeah. So, you know, they have so much trauma. Mm -hmm. And then Garen, on the other hand, it's crazy. Despite him being a hit and run victim, he is the most loving dog ever. Yeah. He loves people. Mm. Every time we have events, it's crazy. He's just there lying down, and you don't even know if he's sleeping or not. <laughs> everyone, goes, everyone goes to him. 
him crying and yeah. he's just there smiling. Aww. But it's crazy. It's Each so of the rescues, they have beautiful stories to tell. So many cry. lessons. Yeah, you know? he made me cry just looking, just looking at Garen a while ago. Like, yeah. oh, he's mm. just lapping it all up. All the attention, all the love yeah. that we after were everything. After, after everything. Yes, yeah. After everything. Yes, after that backstory, after yeah. his past, right? He's just really embracing it. Yeah. You know, latest data shows that there are about... 13.11 million stray yeah. cats and dogs in the Philippines. So, Malu, how do you think we can help to solve that problem from okay. the very root, from its root? Yeah, so you know that number, it's so overwhelming. Yeah, it Over is. 13 million, that's just a number of strays. Okay. That doesn't even include the number of dogs yeah. under the hands of irresponsible pet owners. Oh, yeah. yes, there are a lot it. of backyard breeders in the country, yes. which is really what angers us as animal advocates because every day we're doing what we can to control the population. Right. But there are a lot of backyard breeders just continuously adding to the problem. So um, the way I always say as a founder of Potion Project, you know, the ultimate tagline of Potion Project is we can all do something. Mm -hmm. I'm a marketing mm -hmm. graduate. I have zero background on vet med. Mm -hmm. I just acted on my compassion that very day when I saw the dogs on the pound. And, you know, almost six years later, I am very, very proud of the team. We're a team of volunteers, mm. and we have somehow inspired so many people to adopt a stray. Oh. There were many groups and people who started feeding the strays also during the pandemic, because mm. I really started stray feeding during the pandemic. They were the first thing I thought of when we were placed <laughs> yeah, on lockdown, because yeah. I was thinking, you know, on a normal day, they don't even have enough food. Yes. All the more during the pandemic, everyone's asked to be at home. You know, yeah. all the garbage are always, you know, mm -hmm. um, so it was very hard for me to just think about the reality. So I started feeding during the pandemic. And what was supposed to be like a two-week stray feeding program mm. became a ministry. It's changed my life. It's changed the lives, not just of so many strays, but so many people who realized, oh, Aspens and Pospens are not that bad at all. They would see my videos. Like, I would, I would yeah, go live every day. Yeah. They would follow the car. Yeah. And then I wasn't even a cat person before I started Potion because I was so scared of them. <laughs> but then Aww. when I started feeding stray cats, you know, even the, just the first week of feeding the strays, I saw how misunderstood they are. Most people are dog people. They don't like cats. So, you know, these cats that you see in the streets, they're feral because they don't, they never get that chance to express themselves. Right. Because, yeah. you know, right. when they see people, people will shoo them away. Yes, they will yes. throw hot water on mm -hmm. them. So how else are they able to express their love? So when I started feeding them crazy, first week, I get there, I have food, they don't mind the food. They go to me and then... Mm. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, uh, just looking at the development since 2018, you started, you mentioned uh, the numbers, the fantastic numbers, by the way. But in terms of growth, how do you think Posh, Posh and Project will expand from this point? And of course, what are you guys doing to, mm -hmm. you know, reach more parts of the country? Mm -hmm. Yeah, currently, really, our goal is to empower everybody. Um, we want to empower ordinary people because I was once a regular dog lover. I didn't know about spay and neuter. I didn't know we can adopt in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I didn't know there were shelters. So I'm, I'm always coming from that point of view. And I always go back to day one when I would remember, you know, I was once a regular person. I saw the realities of the dogs. I put compassion into action. And this is why I always use my platform to get the word out. I want to encourage people that you don't have to be a vet. You don't have to be an advocate. Like, we can always start from somewhere. So, you know, our goal really is to inspire not just the normal people. Hopefully, we could inspire the government to really do better, to step up. Because even if there were 100, 1,000 potion projects in the Philippines, more than 12 million stray animals, it's just too much. Yeah. We need the help of the government to implement the laws properly. Sure. We need them to set a budget for spaying and neutering. We need to inspire more people. Like That's why we really post about our adoption stories. Mm. We show people just about how beautiful the rescues are because yes. Honestly, you don't even have to go to the shelter of Potion Project. Go outside your homes. There's so many strays yeah. in need of yeah, a home. Exactly. There's so yes. many strays who need to be fed. Go to your local right. pound. There's mm -hmm. so many dogs on death row there. Or you can actually even start in your own home. Yeah. Maybe you live in a household where your dad, your mom, your your sisters don't like your dogs. Mm -hmm. So you can start educating <laughs> them. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's so many dogs with breed that are just tied. They're caged. Yes. So we can start right. from there. Yes. You know, if you... 
But honestly, I would really encourage everyone, like, try to feed a stray animal, develop that relationship and connection with them. They will teach you more lessons than any person could ever teach you. Like, That's beautiful. Yes. 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 Them, they have so they have so much love to give. They're so grateful. That is so yeah. true. And, you know, they just continuously inspire me and the rest of the team to become better versions of ourselves. And yeah, your story is so inspiring, and the dogs as well. And as an animal lover myself, I'm like holding back tears just listening yeah, to this. Yeah. What can we do other than feeding the stray dogs? Because you mentioned as well that rescuing is just the first step. Yeah. It's harder afterwards. Yeah. What can we do to help Poshin mm -hmm. um, and other NGOs to help the animals? Yeah, so again, like I always say, we can all do something. If you can adopt yourself, please do so. But I would also give this caution to everyone. You know, the rabies cases are rising right now. Mm, yes, so if yes. you're exposed to this advocacy, please get pre-exposure rabies shots. Um, you know, shelters are very cramped and crowded already. And, you know, a lot of advocate shelter owners are suffering from compassion fatigue, a lot mm -hmm. of mental yeah. problems, oh, you know, the fact that you're not able to save all of them yeah, and you right. see so much cruelty every day. Yeah. So yeah. the best way people can help is just try to do things on your own. If you can adopt yourself, yeah. please do so. Feed a stray animal mm -hmm. and eventually if you get have the budget to have them spayed and neutered, please do so yeah. because we need yeah. to control yeah, the population. Adopt, don't shop. Before Always. I started Poshan Project, I've wanted specific breeds of dogs. When I started to see the reality in the Philippines, like puppies and kittens thrown in the garbage, mm -hmm. in sacks, yeah, dogs yeah. on death row every day, I'm like, Adopt, don't shop. There's no other option. You yeah. cannot always, add more always. to the population. Yeah. Uh, I agree. Manu, sorry, we're running out of time. But if you can, I'm going to go look for Gary because he doesn't have any airtime. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. but can you please tell us uh, where we can support uh, Passion Project and, of course, uh, how our yeah. viewers can do that uh, so right over there? people who want to support us, please follow our social media pages. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It's Passion Project. Our website is passionproject.org.ph. I encourage everyone, please visit the shelter. Um, you know, the, your personal experience with the dogs, it's, it's really going to push you to mo do more for yeah. them. Um, you know, we accept donations and cash and kind. Volunteers mm -hmm. are welcome. But the ultimate hope of Potion Project is that we will inspire more people right. to do more than yes. just donating, than just visiting a yes. shelter. And if you can change just one life, that's more than enough. Exactly. That's more than Open enough. your homes to all these trays, yeah. right? This is Thank you, this is sweetest. Yeah. Garen came out now for his ear and, time. And Tux is right under you, like oh, so comfortable looking. over there already. But you know what? Thank you so much, Malu, for joining us. What you do, you know, it really restores our faith in humanity. Thank really, you. really. Thank you so much. Thank you.